saying we need infrastructure uh, money. Of course we need our roads, rails, bridges, and tunnels upgraded. Of course we are worse off than several third world nations. Malaysia has better roads. And I asked why the doctrinaire water carriers uh, immediately politicize the train crash, immediately attacking Dems who call for infrastructure upgrades. They're no better than the liberals. We know the train crash was not caused by an infrastructure failure, but by a stoner engineer probably, or God knows what he was doing in the booth there. Maybe he fell asleep. Maybe even it was an attempted suicide by train along the lines of that uh, German uh, pilot in that German plane crash. Who knows? We don't know. But the point is common sense dictates our bridges, tunnels, rails are in antiquated and falling apart. Many were built in the 1930s under the socialist administration. The WPA was clearly socialistic in principle, but the nation benefited from it, which proves something, doesn't it? It proves that uh, an, uh, a patriotic, honest socialist may not be so bad as a unpatriotic, lying conservative. So the issue is not socialist or conservative. The issue is who's running things. That's what really matters. Right now, I don't see an honest man or woman amongst them, to be honest, except one. I like Senator Cotton. By the way, speaking about that, how in the world did Larry Ellison decide to back the ice cream man from Florida? I'll never understand. What in the world did Ellison see in this guy Rubio? I'll never understand. To me, Rubio is an empty shell. Rubio is a flip-flopper. Rubio will go whichever way, you know, he, he's told to go that day. One day he's for a war. The next day he's against the war. One day he's for immigration. The next day he's against immigration. One day he's for Israel. The next, I mean, you know, the guy is not a heavyweight. The guy is a paperweight. Why would Ellison back him? I have no idea. You'll have to ask Larry Ellison, who I don't know. Let's take some calls on this issue of infrastructure. Wait, I'm not ready yet. I wanted to remind you of some of the great <clears throat> edifices that we all enjoy every day and benefit from that were built by the socialists. Hoover Dam, Lincoln Tunnel, LaGuardia Airport, Empire State Building, the overseas highway linking the Florida Keys, the dams of the Tennessee Valley Authority, Shasta Dam in California, Hoover Dam in the Colorado River, the nation's first freeway in Los Angeles, the Golden Gate Bridge and the San Francisco-Oakland Bay Bridge fundamentally were built as a result of big government. And by the way, as you look around America and you see beautiful Art Deco designed schools, courthouses, city halls and hospitals, all a result of the Public Works Administration. And there was other work, by the way, that was funded by the New Deal. And these jobs were very important. And I mentioned them, the Civilian Conservation Corps, which employed two million poor men. And I talked about my friend's father, uh, my, no, my friend's, my father's friend who was in the, in the CCC camps. He was a tough kid, a fighter. And he talked about how he had to fight every day of his life in the CCC camps to survive because it was all tough, poor kids. And they didn't like each other. And they all fought with each other. But they all turned into men in the CCC camps because they were worked like prisoners on a chain gang by the government, by the way. And then there were other things built during this time that you may or may not know about. And I'm not talking about the Hoover Dam or the Golden Gate Bridge. Have you ever seen some of these wonderful artworks from the 1930s and now shifting away from engineering? Did you know about the artists who were employed by the WPA under the umbrella Federal Theater Project, Federal Writers Project, Federal Artists Project, anathema to conservatives, but some amazing work was produced because these people were starving to death and it gave them a pittance, but they could live on the pittance and produce some art and some written work that lives to this day. I'll give you an example. If you go to the top of Coy Tower in San Francisco, I'll give you one example. There are some amazing uh, murals by Diego, I think Diego Rivera. I'm not exactly sure. I think it was Diego Rivera. They're astounding to look at. Now, they're all sort of socialistic in theme, but the art is beautiful. It was all funded by the uh, Works Projects Administration in the 1930s. And was it not for that? There would be blank walls painted beige. I'll give you another example. You drive through many tunnels in New York City or Baltimore or even, I would suppose, some other East Coast cities, and you'll find the tunnels are covered with tile, 
Now, no one tiles tunnels today. It's just labor intensive, very expensive, right? The white tiles, that was a way of employing people in the trades who were out of work. They were hired by the government to tile the inside of the tunnels. They're beautiful. And so what I'm saying to you is try to think as opposed to react. Try to think clearly as opposed to being a doctrinaire knee-jerk liberal or a doctrinaire knee-jerk uh, Republican. And we all have to come to agree that our infrastructure is crumbling. It needs to be rebuilt. But we need an honest government to do it. That's the rub. And I'm not Shakespeare, but I'll be back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Well, I've been covering everything from halibut to Halliburton today on the Savage Nation and mainly talking about infrastructure and the degenerating infrastructure in America. Of course, we all know the train didn't crash because of a failed infrastructure. It was a train going 106 miles an hour around a curve uh, that was uh, supposed to be limited to 50 miles an hour. And the, uh, the lawyer for the engineer is saying he doesn't remember anything. I don't believe that at all. And I think it's a shame that the NTSB has not drug tested this engineer. I mean, I don't know if they have. My guess is the lawyer prevented them from drug testing him, but the lawyer already said he had no drugs in his system. I'm going to believe that? Are you kidding me? To me, it's homicide if he had drugs in his system. Or if he was texting while speeding, homicide. It's that simple. But that's not the, the, the issue today. The issue today is, is not the drug testing of the train. The issue is the infrastructure in America, which is a disgrace. If you travel the world, you know what I'm talking about. If you live in a mansion and you live in a bubble, and everything is done for you, you think the world has a perfect infrastructure. But there's a world outside of G550, trust me. Uh, I've been in it, I walk on it, I drive on it. San Francisco is a disgrace. Broken streets, broken roads, billions of dollars sucked up the noses of these corrupt politicians. It's, it's sickening. It really is sickening. And yet they can find the money to build these two tunnels, these two tubes and a new roadway, uh, on the uh, uh, entry to the Golden Gate Bridge. I mean, where'd that money come from? That was not a privatized construction job, the new Doyle Drive in San Francisco. It's federal, probably state and local taxation that paid for it. And the real issue here is, how did they find companies able to build it? That's the part that amazes me, that despite all of this corruption, there are still uh, companies that are capable of doing the job. That's the part that amazes to me. Ama amazes me. The, the orchestration is greater than that of building the pyramids, incidentally. So the uh, companies are still around who can do this work. The question is, uh, how are we going to rebuild the entire nation? I don't know. Let's take some calls on the Savage Nation. There's great calls out there who have been holding for a, a, a long time. Pat on WJR Radio in Detroit. Welcome to the Savage Nation program. Uh, first, Mike, I consider you the sage of our age. <laughs> uh -huh, yeah. You're a poet, but you don't know it. Sorry to use an old one. That's right, sir. Uh, I guess my question involves, I know you're talking about infrastructure falling apart, and my question kind of involves everything falling apart on a larger scale. Um, you know, if, I know, I love how you always talk about looking past in history, because uh, my old man told me the same thing growing up. And if you look at history, every great civilization before us has risen and fallen. You know, which kind of follows the cyclical, cyclical nature of things, which which is really kind of hard to understand. And well, see, are you you're asking, does the the crumbling infrastructure indicate we have a crumbling nation? Is that what you're saying? Well, yes. I mean, it's well, we do obviously have a crumbling nation. If we can elect a man as incompetent as Barack Obama, there's something something crumbling here. How can you get a man as incompetent as this and so questionable in loyalties unless the nation was crumbling? And does that I mean, the citizenry has crumbled. That's how you elect a man like this who had no qualifications whatsoever to be president. You could see he's not capable of the job. In a sane nation, he would have resigned or his own party would have thrown him out to save the country. But we don't live in a sane nation. So my opinion is, yes, the nation is crumbling, just like the infrastructure. But I don't think we're finished at all. I think we're just changing 
uh, to something lesser than what we were, and I don't know that it could ever be returned to what it was, to be honest with you. Uh, I, I, I said from the outset when I began in radio, Pat, and I was uh, rid ridiculed by the local papers, it was back in 94, I said that America is going to become somewhat like Portugal in our lifetimes. And they laughed at me, said, oh, Savage said America is going to become like Portugal. My point then is the same as today. Nations don't generally disappear. They just diminish in power and they go on. Portugal was once a world dominant nation, as you know. It ruled the seas, it exploited the lands, and look at Portugal today. Uh, it still exists, it's still a nation, it's still got beautiful architecture, but it has no authority and no power. And I think, unfortunately, that's where America is going. It's not exactly the dustbin of history, but it's not exactly the top shelf of the store either. And on that wonderful progressive note, I will send you a copy of Countdown to Mecca, my sterling advanced novel about America being threatened by Islam and what Jack Hatfield does to stop generals who want to attack Mecca with not an atomic weapon but something even worse in order to make certain uh, that the world does not fall into Armageddon. Fabulous novel, last in the series. And I have to say that's the third in the trilogy of the Jack Hatfield series. I'm not doing another one. I know you say, oh, he'll do another I won't do another one. But it's doing very well. But there's Amazon, Amazon sabotage, which I can prove to you in one sentence. If you go onto Amazon.com, you see the book is, I don't know, 140 or whatever. It's not number one. But on the mystery, suspense, and thrillers, it was number five or six or seven. And then you click on mystery, suspense, and thrillers, and you see all the books in the top ten. My book is not shown on that page by Amazon. I have complained to my publisher to no avail. I've complained to everyone to no avail. There are, there are moles inside every organization in America which undermine conservatives like Michael Savage. But what can I say? Am I suffering as a result? No. Will my life change as a result if they publish that picture? No. Would my life change if the book sold an extra 50,000 copies? No. But the message in the book is what's so important which is why I wrote Countdown to Mecca. It's a very important message. Again, I tried to thread the needle and walk the line, just as I did today. I tried to show the two sides of the story of radical Islam. The generals who think that by blowing up Mecca during a Hajj will put a stop to that madness, and Jack Hatfield and his friends who know it will bring about the destruction of the world. No one has ever tried to achieve what I did in Countdown to Mecca. You owe yourself a read. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855. We know the train crash was not caused by an infrastructure failure, but by a probably stoner engineer, as I said, may, maybe even an attempted suicide by train. The fact is they should have drug tested him the minute they found him. But his lawyer already is between him and though he doesn't remember anything. You hear this? That unto itself is worrisome. Incidentally, the notoriously tight curve where the accident occurred is near the site of one of the deadliest train wrecks in U.S. history, which was the 1943 derailment of the Congressional Limited from Washington to New York, where 79 people were killed. So it's not the worst train wreck uh, in history, but it's a big deal. And right away, left and right, doctrinaire positions, left says we need more construction, Wright says, no, we don't need anything. Well, my argument is a little different than both of them, which is the infrastructure of America is falling apart. The roads are a disgrace. I want you to, one of these days, if you come to San Francisco and you're coming in from SFO to San Francisco, it is the worst road in the United States of America. There is still not a highway from the San Francisco airport into the city. It's a wreck. It's broken. It goes through local streets. It's a disgrace. You go to Malaysia, they built a skyway above the streets. Now, part of the problem is the morons in the city who have these planning decisions that make no sense whatsoever. They have to preserve the slums. So they don't want to build a roadway over the slum. You hear? Idiots. Just morons. Again, doctrinaire planners won't let them build a skyway from the city to the airport. So there's a lot of problems in America with why we can't rebuild the infrastructure. Some of it is due to zoning restrictions. Some of it is to idiot planners. Uh, there are many, many issues here, but are worth discussing because our infrastructure is crumbling, falling apart. Is there anyone listening to the Savage Nation today 
who can tell me they've not been in a tunnel recently in a major city that's not leaking? Is there anyone who can listen to this show who knows anything about bridges, not agree that they're falling apart? I 